If your TV has horizontal lines, don't throw it away. You may be able to get rid of those lines with a piece of tape. The problem here at horizontal lines probably means it's an LCD problem and you can't really go in there and replace a broken part. But I'm going to show you how you can use tape to detour around the problem and get a good image again. My name is Reese, and this is part two in a video series. If you watched part one, you saw me take apart a broken 55 inch 4K TV and fixed it with a tiny piece of tape. And in that video, I mentioned that I was going to explain a little bit more about what the tape was actually doing. And in order to do this, I need to take you close, real close, inside the LCD panel to the sub-pixel level to show you what's going on here. This is going to be fun. I'm also going to be using a similar technique on this TV with tape to get rid of these horizontal lines. So I hope you enjoy and learn something new today. Let's get started. This is an LCD screen that I took from a broken laptop. It's basically the same LCD panel you'll find in any TV. It's a thin little panel connected to a printed circuit board at the top here that helps manage the image. There's a lot of complex technology in this thing that makes it work. And there are different manufacturers and different designs, but I want to cover some of the basics that pretty much apply to all LCDs and how they work, whether they're an old laptop screen or a giant 4K TV. So to understand the basic concept of how LCDs work, you need to know that there are two key pieces of information that are passed to the panel. First, there's the image data, which comes down vertically, and the second piece of information is the row signaling data, which happens horizontally. Now, sometimes people ask me, hey, help me out. I have a line on my screen, and I'll say to them, is it horizontal or is it vertical? Because that will give me a clue. Is it an image data problem or is it a signaling problem? The data comes down from these tiny little chips on these yellow cables through these tiny little wires that go all the way to the bottom of the screen. So the image data is sent to the screen one row at a time. So row one gets turned on, then it gets filled with image data. Row two gets turned on, then filled with image data, and it goes all the way down to the bottom of the screen and then back up to the top. The filling up and refreshing of the rows of the image data happens so fast you don't even notice it. Instead, you see a moving picture. But with a camera, it looks like these dark lines are moving up. I need to take you in closer to explain what you're seeing here. When you zoom in really close, you can see the rows of red, green, and blue pixels, or sometimes they're called subpixels. It's the combination of these three colors and their intensity levels that are mixed together to produce the desired colored pixel. You may or may not know that an LCD works based on light polarization. The liquid crystals are actually changing shape in order to polarize the light from 0 to 90 degrees to get the desired intensity. So when I say image data, I'm talking about the voltage applied to the liquid crystal to get it into the desired shape. And again, it's more complicated than this, but generally the image data is sent one row at a time. Inside each subpixel, there are three main parts. There's a transistor, which is the on-off switch, there's the liquid crystal, and there's a capacitor. When you think of capacitor, think battery. Here are some photos of the very edge of the LCD. You may not be able to notice here, but there are lots of wires running alongside the edge. As we get closer, you can see these wires go to every single row. So the way that this works is that the clock signals from the TCON board are used to tell all of the transistors in a specific row to turn on one row at a time. And when they're on, they accept the image data that's sent to them. It was really hard for me to get a photo of it, but if you look closely here, you can see the data lines coming down in between each subpixel. The timing needs to sync so that when the specific row is on, the data is sent at the same time. And while that row is on and the correct voltages are being applied to the liquid crystals, those tiny capacitors are also charging up like a battery. And each capacitor keeps those crystals bent at just the right shape long enough until the transistors turn on again to receive the new image data. So these darker bands caught on camera are the fading of the charge on the capacitors before that row gets refreshed. So back to the original TV, the vertical lines on this LCD most likely mean that there's a problem within the circuitry that handles the row signaling. So I don't really know what is causing the lines, but the isolation technique will help me narrow down which half of the screen has the problem. This is the same diagnostic I used in the part one video to help me solve the issue on that 4K TV. On this one, driving only one half of the screen at a time, I find that the lines only show up on the left side. So my goal now is to use tape on the ribbon cable to block some of the row signaling going to the left side to detour around the problem and hopefully see if the picture can improve. I've taken the TCOM board out to help me figure out where the row signaling lines are. Otherwise, I have no clue what lines to block. 
In the previous video, I was looking for an abbreviation for the word clock, C-L-K. Since this is a different LCD design, it won't exactly be the same abbreviations, but on the right side here, I found what I'm looking for. The signal STVP down to CKB1 are the important row signals. I can see where the lines are that I want are labeled on the right, but the problem is on the left, and over there, they're not labeled, so I'm not sure which ones I need to block. But remember the rows turning on one at a time? The same row signaling is sent to both sides. This is how blocking signals can help deal with horizontal lines. The idea is to block the side with the problem and limp along with the signaling from the other side. So I use my multimeter in continuity setting. It beeps when there's an electrical connection. And here I can easily find the corresponding set of signals since they are sent to both sides. On the ribbon cable, I've marked off the seven signals that I wanna block. And here I can cut the tape perfectly to match and cover over these contact points. And when I put this back in the TV, I'll be relying on the row signals on the right side to carry the burden of making the image look good on the screen. Now putting tape on this ribbon cable should get rid of the lines, but the TV is designed to have both sets of signals cross over each row. So we're only gonna be operating on one set. The image probably won't look perfect, but you may not notice the difference. And hopefully again, the lines will be gone. Now you might ask, how did you know what lines to block on the TCON board? Now when I first started, I wasn't exactly sure. So I looked online to try to understand what the various references meant. I even downloaded the patent application from Samsung. This is from 2012 for their LCD TV design. And I studied it and I was able to decipher these are the signals that handle the row signaling. My degree is in computer engineering, so this looks familiar to me. These signals are used to turn on each row. In this design, the signals aren't directly controlling the rows, so most likely the problem on this TV is a short circuit or an open circuit within the logic that controls the top third of the screen. Now, if I don't get a good image by blocking all of the row signals on this ribbon cable, one thing that I can do is use trial and error and unblock them in different combinations or one at a time until I get an image that I like. Now, one thing I do like seeing is your questions and comments. So please post those down below. I love to help people learn new things. So I'd love to hear from you. And also make sure you download my free PDF and join my email list for more repair tips, tricks, tool reviews, and more. So let's try this out and see how it goes. So everything is back together inside the TV. And here when it turns on, all the lines are gone. A little piece of tape got rid of all the lines and the image looks great. Now, the only downside is that if you get really close, there are some really faint lines on the left side and the colors that are not black or white can look a little faded. This is unavoidable because there's no signal coming from that side. But when I sit in a normal distance, I tell you, I don't even notice. I actually brought my kids in to see if they could see anything and they told me they couldn't tell. So for a small piece of tape, you can rescue a TV that might otherwise be thrown away because it has horizontal lines on the screen. Now, when you do this, you aren't actually getting to the problem itself, but you're getting around it. And this solution will hopefully give you a TV that's working for many years to come. This video was part two in a series. If you hadn't watched part one, go ahead and check that out here, where I brought a newer 4K TV back to life with a piece of tape. And if you aren't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to learn more cool things like this.